Detail in half an hour from yeah. Matt. Uh, the pandemic. It's cost the public purse hundreds of billions of pounds in support schemes to help the economy, extra NHS resources, lost tax revenues. How are we going to pay it back? Uh, Sarah has an update on all the figures for us this morning. Hi, Sarah. Morning. morning. Yes, morning. We're talking about public finances today. And that's because we've got latest figures out for January at around 7 o'clock this morning. And they will tell us how much the government is spending and borrowing. And it's no surprise the pandemic is having a huge impact. Good morning, everyone. These are big, big numbers. And this matters to all of us because it affects how much we all might have to pay in taxes in the future. Now, the government is on target to borrow nearly £400 billion for this financial year, which ends in April, a level not seen in the UK outside of the two world wars. And this huge increase shows the emerging effects of the government's pandemic policies. So measures to support jobs and the economy, like the furlough scheme, but and by the middle of December, nearly 10 million workers had been furloughed. And that's cost over £45 billion. But the government's also spent billions more to support businesses, as well as extra on welfare and support for the NHS. In fact, the Treasury says it's committed over £280 billion to coronavirus support measures. And to put that into some context, that's just over three times what the government normally spends on education in a year. Huge numbers here. And at the same time, the government's main source of revenue, taxes, things like business rates and VAT, that income has fallen dramatically. So the government is having to borrow more to balance the books. So is that a problem? Here's the view from one analyst. Right now, as a country, we've got record low interest rates. They are likely to stay there for a very long time. That's pretty much what the Bank of England um, has said and has committed to at their meetings recently. And when you've got debt at very low interest rates, that becomes much easier to service. Uh, the 10-year gilt yield, for example, is, which is the UK's borrow main borrowing instrument, uh, is 0.65%. So I think if you've got a personal credit card and you've got an interest rate of less than 1%, I think people would be thinking, actually, that's not so bad, so you might spend a bit more. That's pretty much what the government is doing, except, of course, the government has to do it at the moment because they have to prop up the economy because of the pandemic. So lots of things to consider here. And we should get a better idea of just what the Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, thinks when he delivers the budget in just under two weeks' time. And he's under pressure to extend these emergency support schemes and to do more to protect jobs. But then at the same time, members of his own party are demanding he starts fixing the tattered public finances. And as I say, later this morning, we get those latest figures on what those finances will look like. The more the government goes into debt, the greater the pressure on the Chancellor to raise taxes or rein in spending in the budget. And the figures are out at 7 o'clock, and I'll bring them to you. We're Looking forward to it. Pouring I mean, over those numbers for us. I yeah. will be. I mean, that's the question, isn't it? We're all asking, how will we pay for it? Um, which the government has made clear now is not the time to outline that in its words. Brilliant. Um, unsurprisingly, the cost of the pandemic um, is mounting up, and now the government, we understand, borrowed nearly nine billion pounds last month. It's a record amount, Sarah. Yes, these are huge numbers, aren't they? And we're talking about public finances today. And these record figures really show us how much the government is spending and borrowing. And this all matters to us because it could impact on how much we all pay on taxes in the future. Good morning, everyone. These figures from the Office for National Statistics are for January. They've been released in the last hour. And they relate to the month when the whole of the UK was back in lockdown. The government borrowed £8.8 .8 billion. That's the highest January borrowing since records began back in 1993. And I think this really shows how much the pandemic is weighing down on the economy. And these are huge numbers, so it's useful to understand the detail. The government is on target to borrow nearly £400 billion for this financial year, which ends in April, a level not seen in the UK outside of the two world wars. And this huge increase shows the emerging effects of the government's pandemic policies. So measures to support jobs and the economy, like the furlough scheme. And in December, nearly 10 million workers had been furloughed. That cost over £45 billion. But the government 
government spent billions more to support businesses, as well as extra on welfare and support for the NHS. And then, of course, there's the cost of buying vaccines and PPE. In fact, the Treasury says that at the last count, it's committed over £280 billion to coronavirus support measures. And to put that into some kind of context, that's just over three times what the government normally spends on education in a year. And at the same time, the government's main source of revenue, taxes, things like business rates and VAT, that income has fallen dramatically. In January, they received almost £1 billion less income. So the government is having to borrow more to balance the books. Now, we should get a better idea of just what the Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, plans to do to tackle all of this when he delivers his budget in just two weeks' time. And members of his own party are demanding that he starts fixing the tattered public finances. But economists are divided over how we should see tax rises as part of the government's response. Rishi Sunak is a Conservative, and there's a lot of fiscal Conservatives in his party, so he has to nod his hat to them in some way. But I think any tax rises are going to be really, really minimal. When you've got an economy that's trying to grow back from a 10% decline in 2020, high, this is not the time to hike taxes, and, and you know, Chancellor Sunak will know that. And he will be looking at other options to try and grow the economy. Uh, tax rises, when you're trying to dig yourself out of a hole, will just push you deeper into that hole. And last week, we learned the economy shrank by nearly 10% last year. And today's figures really underline the Chancellor's problems ahead of the March budget. Now, he's under pressure, isn't he, to extend emergency support like furlough, the uplift in universal credit and the business rates holiday beyond the spring. But at the same time, he's under pressure as well to rein in spending at some point. And the big question here is how all of this is paid for. And one interesting figure to pull out from this release this morning is the government spent five billion pounds on job support schemes just in January. So they're, they're, these are huge numbers, aren't they? And the Chancellor's under real pressure to rein in spending.